delicious. Okay. <sighs> What's going on, everybody? Today, I want to tie for you guys the Jerk Jr. Um, yeah. I just want to tie the Jerk Jr. So, basically, if you've seen the Super Jerk tutorial, you already know how to tie this. You might not know that you already know how to tie this, but you do, because it's all the same techniques and materials. Um, I'm currently going to tie it in a completely random color combo that I think will look cool because that's a little bit more entertaining for me. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I'll explain my favorite color combo while we're doing it just so you guys have that for a reference, which is the shad color. Um, but the tail is white bucktail. Now, I think a lot of people think this might be like a minnow pattern, but it's more uh, a bait fish. It actually comes out pretty big. It's about four inches, three and a half inches long. Uh, this is a size one, no, size one aught attitude extra from Partridge. Um, it's a nice wide gap, thick wire hook, and that's the only weight that we have on this thing, right? Uh, and you can fish it on a floating line. Um, the hook will... It's just heavy enough that it slips under, and it's kind of like a fluttery, jiggy fly that... The head is designed, obviously, to, you know, jerk bait action in, in still water. And in a river, that head catches currents and digs and dives and, and moves around a lot. So the tail is bucktail. And I have people ask me why bucktail, because I think that they think bucktail doesn't move. Because bucktail is stiff, right? But bucktail is still a natural material, and it still has a taper, fat butt, skinny tip. And bucktail is very elegant. It has awesome movement in the water. Um, but it is rather stiff and so it's not going to tangle up and foul on the back of my hook very often, basically only when you catch a fish. Um, and so what it does is because this is a jerk fly, when that fly jerks, I want you to be able to see the silhouette, right? And so having a nice kind of stiffer material, which still has a lot of good movement to it, is going to carry that silhouette. So when that fly turns, you're going to see the entire profile of that fly and it's going to get smacked. So that's why I use bucktail. So I'm going to take tip hair, right, so that it doesn't basically want to flare at all. So we're just going to cut some tip hair off of here. You don't need a lot at all. I would guess maybe 15 strands of tip hair. And we're going to hang that off about two inches off the back of that hook, maybe two and a half. Cut that nice and straight. We're going to catch that. I'm tying with a monofilament thread. Don't ask me. I don't know why. It's fun. I actually like tying with it. But we got that tied in, right? Put quite a bit of tension on it. I'm going to take about five kind of loose, non-tension wraps just to help close that off. And now we have basically our tail, right? Now these fibers tend to be a little staticky, staticky and flare away from each other. So I got a cup of water here, wet my fingers, and I'm just going to stroke those tail fibers and remove any static from them. Now, I typically use a Hedron Flash Boo 1 64th inch micro lateral line scales. Um, I'll use two of them and just double them back, but I'm going to use something uh, quite a bit more fun for this one just because we're changing up the color combo. So what you see here this is a Mirage Hollow Lateral Line Flash from Deer Creek. And basically all it is is Holographic Flashaboo, Mirage Flashaboo, and Micro Lateral Line Scale. All of which are Hedron products, right? And then it's blended together and provided to you in a little hank here. So I think it's a really cool kind of pre-blended product so you don't have to do any of that work yourself. And I'm just going to get not very many fibers. I don't want it to be super flashy, but I'm going to take some of that off. That's going to be probably too much. Half that and set others. Put that aside for a different fly. And then basically I'm just going to taper this and fold it back on itself. So I'm going to cut that short, put a little taper into that. Tie that down and then we'll fold this back. So we're going to have a nice flashy tail on this. I'm going to be throwing this one for smallmouth. So the the two micro lateral line scales is not nearly this aggressive. Uh, if you wanted to throw this for trout or anything. 
feel free to change up that flash but I think that's pretty good looking so the body is the same as the super jerk you might have guessed that basically we're gonna take an EP craft fur brush this is obviously white and red and an EP sparkle brush this is black and purple tie them in together palm them at the same time and it's gonna build a bulk um, really simple quick easy efficient way to do it it gives you a really nice silhouette and obviously a nice flashy core so in my favorite color combo the shad I like to use uh, an EP craft fur brush which is white craft fur and chartreuse uh, EP fibers and then I'll, I'll palmer that with the holographic silver sparkle brush so that's my favorite color combo and so I'm going to tie this in here and then we'll palmer this forward So whenever I tie in a brush, this one and the, the kind of bigger pike brushes that I got that I'm working on, um, I always double it back and tie it in twice so that it can't ever get pulled out. So yeah, just so you know that. So the Super Jerk has a whole bunch of craft fur wings, right? And that's uh, not that's something I omit on this pattern to simplify it. Um, if the fly you could tie it in a slightly larger size, um, which I have been doing for Pike and working on kind of a jerk senior. And I reincorporate that wing in there because it gives it a nice kind of elongated back taper, which I think is very bait fishy. So I'm going to omit that on I omit that on the jerk juniors basically. So we're almost done. All we got to do is stack a dubbing head, and for that you probably guessed it, Frankenfly monster dub. We're going to do some purple over pink here. We're going to do simply uh, two stacks on top, two stacks on bottom, and you're good to go. So these front stacks are rather sparse, right? I just want them vertical. I don't need a lot of dubbing on the sides, basically any at all, except for to have something, a base to glue our eyes onto. So that's all tied in sparse. I'm going to build up a little thread dam here to kind of help force that dubbing backwards. And then we'll whip finish off. And we'll get some eyes on here after we pick this head out. Sweet, so that's all picked out. It's nice and tall, not super deep. So what I want to show you guys is the head for this. Um, something I've, I've picked up from Fly Fish Food and from Bug Wild is a product called Tear Mender. Um, and it's an elastic based glue basically um, that's super effective for putting eyes on kind of dubbing wool and synthetic style heads. Um, and basically all it allows you to do is it's going to saturate this dubbing and you're going to glue your eyes together through the dubbing around that hook, right? And basically it allows those eyes to kind of shift and move around and rotate when fish run into that and eat the head of that fly um, instead of kind of shearing off a very uh, firm kind of backing. So this is Tear Mender in a Loon applicator bottle just so that I have a precision tip on there. Um, yeah, so we're going to put some eyes on here. These are the new, I'm pretty sure they're the Rochi Green 3D eyes from Deer Creek. Uh, you can see these, these are pretty sick eyes. Um, and that's what we're going to be putting on here in 8 millimeters. I like really big eyes uh, on the Jerk Junior. They might seem a little out of proportion, but the eyes are what give it the movement, right? It's the head design that gives it the jerk pick action. So basically I'm going to put uh, some tear mender on this dubbing, let it soak in, put another dab down, and I want that soaking all the way down towards that hook, right? So that I can get these eyes glued together. Then I'm going to rest this eye on there. Put 
push that down a little bit. And I glued it to my finger, of course. Hold up, technical difficulties. Okay, it's on there. <laughs> Don't worry about pushing that down quite yet. Then we're going to fill up this side, let that soak in there. Put this other eye on there. So what I like to do is I put quite a lot of tear mender on there. You can probably see that. Um, and it, it takes a quick second to set up, so I'm going to clean off my applicator tip, blow out any bubbles so I don't get any kind of jams in there. And then you can take some tweezers, right? We're going to pinch these eyes together and then slip these tweezers over. And you're going to use the pressure from the tweezer basically to hold those in place while they dry. So that you don't have to sit here and pinch these. I'm just going to make sure that my eyes are completely vertical. Right where I want them. Move my dubbing around a little bit. And then I'm going to drink my beer. So basically what you got is a bait fish with a really tall aggressive head on there now. And what you want to do, at least what I like to do, is I like to come in and thin that out. So I'm going to comb it out, and then I'm going to come in and contour those eyes. Now this does two things. It, it kind of reduces the forward friction and bulk so that your fly has a nice cutting action to it, right? Um, and I would still recommend doing this even without UV. If you don't have UV, that's all good. Um, but what it also does is it allows me to contour my eyes with UV and we're going to build up a little UV cone at the front of this so that those eyes have a ton of durability. And basically, this head design should last you a lot of fish. We're talking 20, 30, 50 fish. I mean, you should... They'll be on there. So I like to thin out the bottom, typically, a little bit more than the top. And that's just personal kind of aesthetic. So, there you go. That is ready to fish for those of you without UV. For everybody with UV, check this out. We got um, some UV Diamond Fine Flex from Deer Creek here. They got new bottles and applicator tips. Uh, basically, the tip comes basically sealed, and all you got to do is take some scissors, cut it off, and so you can cut it to whatever diameter you want if you want it to come out faster or slower or have less precision. So what I like to do is uh, I might have to turn my light on so I can see better. Which probably sucks for you guys. But what I like to do is come in and load up the front of this dubbing with UV. And I'll probably load up the bottom too. And then we're going to take a bodkin, plain and simple. We're going to help move that around and push that down into that dubbing so that gets nice and soaked up, right? We want that to impregnate the dubbing and really fill in this head and make it durable. Now this is a new torch for me. This is the Deer Creek uh, torch, Pro Torch. It's 3 watts of curing power, which is quite a lot. You can actually cure that resin in about 5 seconds with a direct hit. Uh, so it goes pretty quick, which is super, super nice. So it's a really powerful torch. And then what I like to do is I'm going to put about 2 of those 3 drops right on that eye. And I'm going to smooth that out over top of that eye. And I'm going to drag it to the top and to the bottom where we built up our dubbing cone so that I have resin going over the edges of my eyes and onto my dubbing. 
And then once all that's evenly distributed, and I'm happy with that, it's going to come in again and torch it. So now we have an awesome kind of UV cone. And what's really nice about these new tips is they come with the, the cap is actually attached to the cap. The cap is attached to the cap, if you know what I'm saying. So we have a nice tack-free elastic, right? That was the UV Diamond Fine Flex elastic head over an elastic base glue, right? So that can all function together and shift around. You have this awesome silhouette dubbing pushing water up over the craft for brushes with the EP fibers building your bulk tapering down to a stiff based but elegant movement bucktail with some blended flash so that's pretty sweet I think I'm gonna take a chart pack marker yep in black and I'm gonna put some dots on top because I'm an artist <laughs> I'm, I'm just pulling your leg And there you have it. That is a Jerk Junior. And I don't know if I told you the color dubbing I like for uh, my favorite color combo, the Shad color combo. I usually do uh, Monster Dub in gray over top. And I'll do white on the bottom, just plain and simple. Gray over white. And then I'll take that chart pack and I'll do a small line over top to get it nice and dark. And then, uh, yeah. Uh, sometimes I do a red throat, sometimes I don't. It depends. So there you go. That's Jerk Jr. Awesome Stillwater Fly. Even more awesome River Fly. This thing crushes smallmouth bass like you would not believe. And if you ask me, it looks like a pretty good snook pattern too. And maybe some baby tarpon and whatever you want to throw for it. So, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, share, comment, ask any questions if you got them. And hopefully there will be more videos coming soon. Thanks.